Alright everybody, uh, welcome back to another Friday Night Magic Tournament at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans. I'm unfortunately in this room by myself this evening. We have uh, a little bit of a scenario here in the local area. We got a pretty significant amount of snow this morning. It wasn't necessarily the amount of snow, it was the fact that it came unexpectedly and very quickly. So the roads are not in great shape, which has left us with a modest yet serviceable 18 people. We did uh, get a little bit of a late start, so I apologize to anyone who's been here uh, since 6.30, which is our normal start time, as we were waiting for a couple people who uh, who were running behind. Obviously, we're not encouraging anyone to hurry to the store, given the road conditions. So, it is what it is. We have 18 people here to play Magic for you tonight. Uh, 18 people means four rounds of Swiss, followed by a top eight. Um, most of the grinders are here, so, the, you know, of the 18 people, there's about 14 or so that are our normal top eight type uh, players. So, while it is a uh, kind of meager field, should have some, some good decks and some good magic. Let's talk about round one. Round one matchup on the left, Jonathan Wright, half of the infamous Wright Brothers tandem. He is playing Grixis Control, which is basically your... Uh, standard control shell uh, with the high end of Thundermall Hellkites um, permission and removal as you would expect. He is playing against Garrett Meadows who I believe won last week's uh, FNM uh, as you see him sporting, well, both of these gentlemen sporting their TCG player event uh, play mats. He is playing uh, black white tokens the reason he is playing black white tokens is because number one, uh, this is the last FNM of this standard environment and he's uh, He's run roughshod over the field for the last month with his Mant Control deck and wants to play something fun this week. Also because uh, one of the other players uh, was supposed to have a deck brought to him, but that person ended up not coming, so he loaned out his Bug Control deck to someone else. So that is your round one matchup. Should be uh, interesting. Uh, pretty standard uh, battle of archetypes between the uh, token aggro and the Grixis Control. I do have to be relatively quiet tonight, as we are. Uh, it's kind of, it's eerily quiet in this building. You can hear a pin drop quite literally, um, because usually we have 40 or more people in here, uh, not necessarily playing FNM, but there are no Warhammer guys. There are only two employees, uh, and I think there's about 25 of us in the entire building. So I will have to be a little bit quiet, but... We still should be able to get things done here. Let's talk about what's happening here. Skurzdag High Priest comes down for uh, Garrett. He uses that Morbid Trigger to make 5-5 five, five demons. End of turn, Midnight Haunting after Jonathan flashes back his Think Twice. So Garrett's deck is basically what you would expect. It is uh, Lingering Souls, Midnight Hauntings. He plays Blood Artists uh, and basically just tries to overwhelm his opponent. Jace, Architect of Thought. For Jonathan is a perfect answer in this situation against the 1-1 one, one token horde. Is it interesting, uh, as we see Intangible Virtue come down, uh, just the key to a Garrett's deck and a Doomed Traveler following that up. Comment in the chat, and it's a very accurate, uh, the turn before or the day before pre-release. Obviously, we have Gate Crash pre-release coming up this weekend. We see uh, Scotty here, or uh, Jonathan here, uh, pondering what well, probably as a miracle looks like a uh, temporal mastery off the top. Oh no, bonfire! Much better. Bonfire for two takes out Garrett's whole team, leaving him with the spirit token from the Doom Traveler. Seems like the best thing could have drawn there. I guess the idea was how much to do it for is what Jonathan was thinking about. But it is the night before the Gate Crash pre-release. We have an event here tomorrow, as well as on Sunday. We'll be streaming the one on Sunday. But this is the uh, dying dying uh, days of an old standard format. Yep. Deck me. Please. All right. Thanks, sir. This, uh, there's no changes. That's just the way, that was the Garrett's list. Okay. Okay. Best of luck. Talking to uh, Max Turner. Max was the one we were waiting on. He was running a little bit late. For those of you who are loyal viewers, you'll know that this is yet another week where viewers on the stream got to pick what deck Max is playing tonight. He's playing a rather interesting Rug Delver build tonight. But he was also running a little bit late, so I had his deck. 
Thunder Maul Hellcat comes down, does not kill the Spirit Token because of the Virtue, but it does tap it, and uh, Tribute to Hunger from Garrett. It's an excellent way of dealing with it. But like I was saying, the last week of Standard before a new set, well, our, our attendance has been down the last few weeks. It is kind of a stale format, so people waiting for the new set to be released, people saving money for the pre-release, uh, possibly playing both of them this week. So not too unexpected to have such low numbers as that even before the three inches of snow we got. Getting some um, getting some comments in the chat about uh, holy crap! I don't know what that card is. <laughs> Like I said, Garrett's playing a fun one tonight. I think that's like Demon Lord of Ashmount or something. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm trying to bring in, bring it up. This, of course, is going to be a... This is just, this is just a uh, preview of the struggle I'm going to have uh, over, <laughs> over the weekend as we are streaming the Sunday pre-release. And I will have to try and figure out what all of these new cards are. Jace, minus two ability, reveal Snapcaster, another Jace, and think twice. Interesting split there. Whoops, I apologize. That was a card Garrett played. Flying, when it enters the battlefield, exile it unless you sack another creature, and it is undying. Interesting. Still a five, five power flyer. Obviously the dream scenario there is to sack a doomed traveler. So Jonathan's got an active Jace here. Um, he's going to land Olivia World there, and if he gets to untap with Olivia, that's going to be brutal for Garrett. At least with the Virtue out, he is going to be able to uh, to have his tokens out of ping range. Uh, but we were getting a comment in the chat about a little bit of lag on the stream. Uh, I noticed that myself. I don't know what's up because we are getting good signal quality here in the uh, in the in the broom closet. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but uh, if it continues uh, throughout the uh, rounds, between rounds, I'll try and see if we can reset the, uh, the router or whatnot. I would encourage everyone, if they are having problems, to refresh their Twitch window. Uh, you will have to watch another random commercial, but uh, that might solve the problem. We have been having issues with Twitch in the past few weeks. So Jonathan piling in with Olivia, and then discarding a think twice. It's, it's so quiet. I know uh, most of you have never played at the store, even though that you have watched us for the last six months. A lot of you are familiar with the setup here, but it is it is eerily calm in this store, <laughs> and it is very off-putting. It's also very difficult for me to be a uh, too rough and rowdy in here, as I'm pretty sure if I spoke at a volume higher than this, uh, everyone outside could, in fact, hear me. I'll try to move the camera, or the uh, microphone as close as possible, and we'll make do with what we got. Garrett struggling a little bit here. He's kind of out of gas. His deck uh, really hinges on the uh, two-for-ones of Lingering Souls and Midnight Haunting. And that uh, bonfire off the top on turn four was pretty devastating to his game plan. Not out of it by any means. He could end of turn Midnight Haunting here and be in good shape, but uh, Jonathan is, of course, playing a plethora of counter magic. He's going to cast something. Three mana, four. An Oblivion Ring. I think that's the uh, dual deck Oblivion Ring. Rewind. Nope, Syncopate for three. Foil Syncopate, so you have to double the amount of mana you pay, obviously. So this one's kind of 
settling in to be a, a long grinding out affair. Jonathan going to do his best to ride the one Olivia to the win. I, of course, will be doing my best to ride this little bit of energy I have for the next six rounds by myself. Question in the chat whether or not it is snowing in West Virginia. It is, in fact, snowing in West Virginia, which is why we only have 18 people at tonight's FNM and why I'm here by myself and why we started 25 minutes late. Little bits uh, of a uh, weather anomaly. And, of course, I've uh, been in enough places before. I know a lot of you watching from places that get much harsh winters than we do here in West Virginia, so I know three inches of snow is laughable for those of you from Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Maine, as I know we have dedicated viewers in all of those places. But uh, when you're not used to it, then the state road personnel are not adequately prepared. And it did come down relatively quickly. So they just couldn't keep up with it. The main roads are fine, but a lot of our guys come from uh, come from some distance, and the side roads are still untouched. And that's why I know you tuned in tonight was to listen to the uh, weather forecast and traffic uh, updates from me. So I do the best I can there. Searing spear, likely another searing spear. Snapcaster searing spear. And that's good enough. So not necessarily the game we would have liked to see, but in a surprise move by Bonfire of the Damned, Bing's very good magic card and nearly winning the game by itself. So we'll take this opportunity like we do every week after the first game to thank the fine folks here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in beautiful downtown South Charleston, West Virginia, who let us come in here and stream their FNM every single week. Lost Legion has four locations in West Virginia, Parkersburg, South Charleston, Princeton, and Beckley, all within a reasonable drive from places like Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Blacksburg, Roanoke, Columbus, Lexington, all kinds of fun places. So if you're ever in this area, if you're ever driving through on business or pleasure, feel free to stop by. Good prices, great people, tons of events. Go to their website, lostlegiongames.com, for a calendar of events. Um... We do this every week. 6.30 p.m. Eastern is the start. Twitch.tv slash magic. Obviously, if you're watching now, you know where the site is. But if you're watching on YouTube afterwards, try to come out and join us live some week. If you can't make your FNM, then come watch ours. We do have some interesting announcements in terms of other events. Like I said before, we are streaming the Gate Crash pre-release event that we're holding here at Lost Legion on Sunday. We'll be having an event tomorrow and then another one on Sunday, both at 1 p.m., both $30 entry fees. Uh, but I will be streaming the one on Sunday, so that should be fun. That should be a good opportunity to stream some limited, which we don't normally get to do. Make, to make sure you don't miss out on that action, make sure to click the follow button uh, on, the, uh, on the Twitch page above and to the left of the video window. You'll receive an email notification whenever our stream goes live. Obviously, you know when the FNM stream starts, but if we do anything that's unscripted, anything that is not part of our normal broadcast pattern. You'll get an email. You'll obviously receive that email. Your phone will uh, ring or vibrate in your pocket. You'll check it. You'll immediately drop what you're doing and run to your nearest computing device that you can see in my beautiful bearded face sitting in a broom closet talking about imaginary wizard fights. So we've got the pre-release on Sunday. Then next Friday we have got... Uh, uh, Gate Crash launch party. We'll be streaming drafts that night. So the same FNM time frame, but rather than a standard tournament, we'll try to do uh, two drafts. Uh, and that will include um, watching someone's picks, as well as the three rounds for that pod, and then hopefully picks and a three-round pod from a second draft. So that should be fun as well. And also there is a. I just received word today that we are doing a Grand Prix trial for Grand Prix Charlotte. Grand Prix Charlotte, of course, going to be held next month in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is a sealed event, and we are doing a sealed Grand Prix trial for that. Uh, dates and details to be coming. Make sure you check out our website, zacksellsmagic.com, for more information. I personally just found out about that myself today, which uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit upset about because it gives us a very little lead time to try and. Uh, try and get that advertised so we get a good turnout but regardless I will have information about that up on our website so check that out I realize now 
about 15 minutes into the round and I forgot to put the timer on. So that's a it's minus 10 points for me. And there we go. Only the most professional of production here at the Zach Sells Magic Productions broadcast. Let's see, who would be here? Oh, so we're getting uh, shout-outs to our usual uh, followers in the chat. I'll name everyone that I can can seem to, to name. We've got Nick from Florida. We've got Cameron in Australia. We have got Ken in... Uh, Pennsylvania. We've got Nick. I believe Nick is in Michigan. We've got, of course, uh, the other Nicholas, who is in uh, Sweden. We've got, uh, I believe that's Charlie. I'm not sure where he lives. So, all of the people I just said, thanks as always for watching. Once again, we've got uh, Jonathan right here. He's up a game with Grixis Control on Garrett Meadows, writing uh, Jace, Architect of Thought, and Olivia Voldaren to the win against the black-white token deck of Garrett Meadows. Will in Ohio. Oh, and of course, Allie Browning also in Ohio. Cannot forget the dedicated followers. Yes, there is a lot of Nicks. I believe there are like... The, I believe there are like 10 nicks out of the 300, close to 400 people that uh, follow the stream on Facebook. I think at least a dozen of them are named Nick. Very popular name amongst people who enjoy listening to the sultry tones of my voice sitting in a broom closet talking about the aforementioned imaginary wizard fight. So nothing has been going on too much here in the game uh, we started off uh, end of turn midnight hunting probably going to get uh, syncopated or dissipated but since midnight hunting is an instant uh, Garrett can at least tap Jonathan out and then resolve something but this one resolves indicating that uh, Jonathan likely does not have a uh, counter spell and there is Soren Lord of Innistrad yeah that, that makes a lot more sense anyway uh, Jonathan just deciding he can handle the two two creatures much better than he can handle uh, whatever Garrett has free reign to cast should he tap out so trades dissipate for a Soren, but four power on board drops Jonathan down to 16. Garrett going to serve in again, knocks Jonathan down to 12. He's on a three-turn clock. And Jonathan playing Grixis. I'm not sure he has any answer to the actual virtue itself once it lands. Blood Artist... Blood Art's actually really good in this spot because, and it sticks because, uh, and the front half of Lingering Souls. If the Blood Art is stuck, I think the Lingering Souls sticks too. So now, uh, Jonathan's in the awkward point where he has to, uh, Searing Spear, oh my. Oh, okay. I forgot the Intangible Virtue. So, uh, Flash is in, is it Static Caster? Static Caster, of course, uh, is a pinger that, uh, deals damage to every creature with the same name. So, assuming he didn't have the intangible virtue, that would have been very brutal against those spirit tokens. But with the virtue out, they all live through. So Jonathan in a world of hurt here. He's staring down 8 damage. But he is very close to stabilizing here. He can play a land in Bonfire next turn. Uh, and Garrett does not really have any kind of direct damage that he can force that last 3 points of damage through. Jonathan thinking hard here. Not sure exactly what he's thinking about. And we are getting some problems with Twitch, it seems. Um... Not entirely sure what's going on. Our signal seems to be relatively good, so uh, it might be an issue with Twitch. If it persists, I will go out and have... Uh... Okay, so in response to attacks, we're, we're seeing a forbidden alchemy. I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what Jonathan is looking for. 
I think the only thing he can cast for one would be an Unsummon, which I doubt he has in his deck, and a Pillar of Flame, which he could not cast on Nick's, on uh, Garrett's turn anyway. Well, three land... Oh, he is playing Unsummon. It's very surprising to me. But then again, I don't know what I'm talking about, so it's not... shouldn't be that surprising. Underworld Connections coming down going on one of Garrett's planes that obviously a sideboard card against control to help with the length of the match help give Garrett some uh, some reach in terms of card advantage in the chat about how they can enter the win the place of rock paper scissors cards that of course is a giveaway that we do every week during round two i'll make a post on our facebook page then you can go there and like share comment or retweet it on twitter all of those will enter you in but more information on that will be coming in round two so garrett going to dig with his underworld connections no bonfire from Jonathan means he either didn't draw the fifth land he needed to cast it or doesn't have it. Uh, never had it in hand anyway. Serving in here, so we're going to need uh, at least one other unsummon. He's playing a lot of unsummons. It seems very awkward. But uh, these guys obviously know what they're doing better than I do. That's why I'm sitting in this broom closet and they're playing magic. Snapcaster back on an unsummon. Goodness. Seems pretty good. So, down to three, and we're flashing back the other half of Lingering Souls. So, presenting Lethal on board, and another Virtue. So, uh, Jonathan is going to have to come up with three Flying Blockers, a Bonfire, or three separate removal spells, because with two Intangible Virtues, even a Lonely Soul Token will be enough. I also don't think the Grixis deck can gain any life. And since uh, people are asking about it, I'll go ahead and make the uh, post on Facebook for the uh, for the giveaway. I'll give more information about that uh, after this round. Try to keep at least a little bit uh, true to form, but it is posted now. So make sure you go there and check it out. Oh, let's just do it now if we're talking about it. You want to start your game like we start all of our future matches? Don't be a noob. Don't roll dice. Don't flip coins. Don't cut for higher cards. Start your games like a boss with rock, paper, scissors cards from Unglued. And if you don't have your own playset, the good thing for you is we give them away every single week. To enter, just go to facebook.com slash zacksellsmagic. That is our stream's website. If you go to zacksellsmagic.com or bookmark that, uh, it will also uh, redirect you there. Uh, so, every time you like that post, comment on the post, share that post, or retweet it on Twitter, you are entered to win. And then as long as you are you like our page and are following me on Twitter, uh, when we draw your name, you will win. It's very simple. Are these cards worth, cards worth a ton of money? Absolutely not. Are they worth a ton of sentimental value? Absolutely so. So head over to Facebook for more information on that. Also, conveniently, if you'll notice at the bottom of the Twitch page uh, below the video window, there are now some handy-dandy uh, buttons that you can click to like our page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So definitely check those out. Click on those and help out the stream. Uh, word of mouth is literally the best thing that could ever happen to us. So if, uh, if you enjoy what you're seeing, if you've enjoyed it in the weeks past, all that we would ask is that you help spread the word. So, Garrett Meadows with a very explosive start. More importantly, with a turn to Intangible Virtue, beats the Is It Staticaster and the control deck of Jonathan Wright. Evens this match at one game apiece, and we go to game three in this round one feature match. Four rounds of Swiss tonight, followed by a top eight. Other things we've got to look forward to tonight, we've got uh, 
You done already? Yeah, I got wrecked. You got wrecked? Yes. By? Mill. He's playing Mill. Anthony. Who's Anthony? That works here. Oh, that's very fun. Well, it's very sad and also very funny. As I'm now joined by infamous stream uh, regular Max Turner. Well, I'm very upset that you lost, but uh, I don't... Cheers. Yes. Let's, we do have dueling Dr. Pepper technology now, so let's separate those. Maxim is 87, right? Yep. Well, Max, it's good you could get here. I know you were running a little bit late. I'm trying to explain to everyone. The weather's very bad here. Yeah, the weather is very bad. And I also explained to people that uh, this is something that my wife, who uh, is from uh, Michigan, and, you know, growing up in Michigan with the winners they got, you know, the... the, the Soft Yes, the, she constantly makes fun of me about... Well, first of all, she's very depressed because we don't have any snow anymore because right. we don't get winter anymore. But she also uh, always gets kind of upset when, you know, we get like a flurry. And then, like, you cannot get into the grocery store because everyone's buying every bottled water, gallon of milk, and bread, <laughs> batteries, everything, radios, uh, everything like that. Uh, and then, like, any time it, it snows at all, like, the, the road, like, the people just drive, like, buttheads. Yep. It's just, like, a giant nightmare. But, but I was telling people, like, today, today was actually bad because the snow came. It was not, they hadn't forecasted it. Um, so the roads weren't treated. When the roads weren't treated, it hadn't been salted, and then also it came down so quick that um, they just couldn't keep up with it. It was like within an hour and a half while they had everything. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. And we do live, at, for those of you unfamiliar with West Virginia's topography, uh, we are the mountain state. It's true. And although none of our mountains are necessarily tall, we're not the Rockies. We do have a lot. Hills. We do have a lot of topography. So it is very common for like one place to get like four inches of snow, and then 30 minutes. It's right up like down the street. Yeah, well, that's maybe not down the street, but you know, so some places got hammered. So just depending on where everyone is. Close stream since I was I was hot. Yeah, Max is, uh, for those of you who have not watched before, Max does participate in our fun promotion where he volunteered several weeks ago to let you guys on the stream and on our website pick the deck that he plays. Tonight, you are piloting... Rug Delver. Rug Delver. It's a cool deck. It is very fun. Basically, the deck works on, uh, you play a turn one Delver, and then you pound in with it. Backed up with, is it bounce spells, counter spells, draw... Mm -hmm. Uh, burn stuff like that. You're also the rug comes from. Originally, we had decided we had tried to do query and dryads. Realized that without the Phyrexian mana spells, that just doesn't work. Uh, but we're playing for Huntmaster of the Fells. Okay, well that's going to happen. But you do have the interesting thing because of the deck, because you have so much flashback and the snapcasters and and one cost spells, that you can flip the Huntmaster almost every turn. So it is very interesting. I was I was uh, <coughs> goldfishing it some last night on Cockatrice. And it did, uh, did so far, I stuck a turn one Delver game two and a one. Mm -hmm. I didn't more than three, so I think I have to have a Delver. To well, start the game. it's also not necessarily great for you against Mill because you are putting a lot of your own cards in your graveyard. Yeah, I'm stuck. I got beat up by John Jason's Phantasm. But imagine how good your Pike will be if you. It got me, uh, negated, I believe. And I was like, oh no. Doesn't Anthony know that he's not allowed to win? against the feature. I'm the second person he's ever beat with that. Stacy Deal being the first. Well, let's talk about the game here a little bit. Jonathan on the play as he lost game two. Uh, he uh, syncopated a turn two intangible for two from Garrett, which is huge because we know Jonathan is playing is it Static Caster and Static Caster against Tokens Unpumped. Is huge. Yeah, but he, he landed the Static Caster last game but not having the but there's virtue out already, so oh, it's useless. Okay. But, uh, Garrett's gone to the Old Faithful? Well, Garrett was going to play uh, a bug control deck that he put together this week. Um, but, <coughs> as I understand it, uh, Adam Vickers, the local legend, was going to play a deck that you were going to loan him. Yep. But then you got uh, you ended up being a little bit late because of the weather, so Garrett loaned the bug deck to Vickers. So Garrett played this. Then Garrett got mad at me because I made him play in a future match with his like little kid deck. <laughs> but... He's doing good with it there, right? To be fair, like... Oh, Thunderball? Yep. Yeah. That's not fun. What a jerk. Pack that and go home. So Jonathan Wright... Uh, is a giant turd. <laughs> well, at least we're not biased in the broom closet. We are... We, are, we call it straight... We call it right down the middle. Yep, yep. Right down the middle. I forgot I... I apologize there. Move the chat off the screen a little bit. We're laggy, apparently. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there, we're a little bit laggy. We do have decent signal here. Uh, it goes back and forth, but someone was saying that there's a, a large tournament on Twitch, and uh, obviously that's not a magic event. I'm, <coughs> I'm not sure if there's some kind there's of a League of Legends, League of Legends tonight. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. I think there's a lot of bandwidth getting eaten up by League of Legends. I mean, they get like 45,000 people watching their things at a time. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah I, I'm, I don't play that game, but I am very well aware of how, how popular it is. I happen to aspire to be a professional League of Legends player one day. Mm-hmm. So this is the why. This is why. If anyone wonders why I don't play standard, this is why. Because of turn whatever mir uh, miracle bonfire. That's not true at all. But I hate I hate that card. Like you play should, a bonfire in my deck there. You shouldn't be. Well, that's fine because you're just playing like. You're also playing Delvers, which are not necessarily like in a great spot right now. But it's true. I just don't like the idea of like. Well, this card just oh, happened oh, yeah. to be on the top of my deck, so I'm I should win this one. Set a cast there. Nope. Mon oh my Mon word. One. Let's put a big poop over Jonathan Wright's picture. He's extending the hand as part of that? I want to call the turd. Yeah, he's realizing because the, the Thunderbolt attack at that point would uh, would do the last five. So, congratulations to Jonathan Wright. You're the best at having Miracle Bonfires in your day. How many players do we have tonight? Eight, you make 18. Nice. Yeah, it is uh, is not the best. Oh, it's a very poor weather for our area. It could be and much worse. And I think worse. the pre-release is more pertinent in people's mind right Yeah, now. we are talking about, of course, about the Gatecrash pre-release. I've talked about it before. A lot of you are probably headed there later tonight at midnight events. Uh, I know we have some People midnight... People have already had their events. Well, if they're in, yeah, in Europe, they probably have already been there, uh, or they're going in the morning, but a couple midnight pre-releases around here in the area. Not here at this store, but uh, all three of the other surrounding stores are, but I imagine uh, a lot of them will be sparsely attended because if the weather's bad enough to not make it out to f and at 6 o'clock, it's surely not going to be any better no. as the snow continues at 1 in the morning. Are we having a Grand Prix trial? We are. Uh, On Thursday? Yeah, it's... Uh, there's a lot of things about it that I'm not real thrilled about. I just learned about it last night. I did too. And then uh, I learned about it through one of the players at the store posting it on his Facebook page, which I asked him, is like, you probably should confirm that with the shop before you advertise that. Why don't, uh, I'm going to step out real quick and see if we can move anybody. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll chat. How's everybody going? How's it going? How's it doing? What's up? We have 100 people on the dot. Fantastic. Is everybody excited to go into your pre-release, local pre-release, tomorrow, tonight, Sunday even? I love you too. Hopefully I'll play on camera next round and you can see this spectacle of a Delver deck. It's really cool though. I played it the first round. Um, I have not piloted it before, so... Um, it's going to be exciting. It's a very cool deck. It's got Delver and Snapcaster and Huntmaster and Pikes and all the good usual items. Well, I love everybody too. And I'm glad that I was able to be your guys' show pony. And you pick my deck and I'll play it. And we're going to keep doing this until you guys get tired of it. No, I'm not one though. Actually, I lost to Mono Blue Mill the first round. All right, so here's the thing about having only nine matches. They're done. Uh, well, there's one. There's one game that's still going, but uh, we are not going to get a second match. But what we are probably going to get as we switch back Showering to the broom closet. Uh, well, that always happens. But we are probably going to get uh, onto the next round much quicker. Are you wanting me to play next round? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see who you're playing against. I'm gonna be in the one packet. Yeah, I don't want to. It, I don't really want to have... There's like a, there's like four guys out there I've never met before. And I really don't want to have to, like... Try to explain the <laughs> situation and get permission. It is very awkward. So, welcome back to the room closet. I am Zach. This is Max. Um, we will go back to your regularly scheduled Imaginary Wizard fights when they are available. I have a, an off... I guess it's an on-topic question. Okay. Why are you only having three lightning bolts? In the picture? Yeah. Of course, the Max referencing the, uh, the graphic that is hanging behind my head right here. Uh, which was so uh, graciously drawn for us by, uh, her name is uh, 
her chat name's Tindra. She did that like two or three weeks ago, just like completely un, uh, unrequested. It's fantastic. Or I mean, it was requested, but like it was no, no one was expecting that. Right. Just made it. The question is, there three lightning bolts? I don't know. There's just three. <laughs> it's no big deal. I don't play the full play set because it's a metagame choice. Yeah, I understand. Chalice. 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 Yes, I'm hedging against Chalice of the Void. 1-1. One, one. That's our counter stream. So let's talk about this. Um, so am I actually coming to pre-release? Not tonight. No, 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 no. The, the normal people pre-release held during the daytime. Uh, what time is it? 1 o'clock tomorrow? There's 1 o'clock tomorrow and 1 o'clock on Sunday. It's a possibility. Okay. Uh, well, let's even if you're not coming, hopefully you can make it out. Hopefully everyone I, out there want to. can uh, make it to... Uh, well, first of all, if anyone is watching within a reasonable driving distance, although it is kind of unfortunate that the weather is uh, relatively bad, but, you know, pre-release is the kind of thing. We're having ours at 1 o'clock, so, you know, that's a that's a reasonable two-hour drive. You leave the house at, like, 9 or 10 in the morning, you come over here to Lost Legion Games, and, and, and remember, if you, I believe last week we said if you drive from Chicago, you get a free Chinese dinner. Yeah, oh yeah. So if you come all the way from Chicago... There's a new restaurant in Ashton Place that and, I want to try. And if you can prove it that you are coming from Chicago with one, two forms of ID. Somebody uh, from UC is going to see us over there. <laughs> yeah, probably, but... Uh, but anyway, uh, but if you can't uh, come to our store, obviously, locally, um, just go to the Wizards website and look for your own pre-release to be held throughout the world. Uh, like Max said, some of you in, uh, in Europe may have already played in your pre-release or are playing, well... Cracking packs as we speak. In the UK, for example, right now, it is just, it is 12.30 in the morning, so those packs have been cracked. Probably no one is back unless they just opened their pool and went home. But uh, the question I have for you, Max... What guild would you be choosing oh, well, should you play in tomorrow's event? Fantastic question. You think about that while I take a long card full off this uh, delicious Dr. Pepper. That is not a Pepsi product. Uh, no, it's, it's not. Is it Cadbury Schweppes? Is that what Do they make Cadbury Cream Eggs? Dr. Pepper 7-Up. Okay, I don't know. Okay. I thought 7-Up was owned by Cadbury. Yeah, let's be fair. I don't know what any of the guild foils are. What's your promo foils? Mm, so I don't know I'm if I going have strictly off a of guild. I don't know if I have any of those on my... Uh, I used to have all the spoiler information, but I don't know if I have it still. I would probably um, be going Boros or Simic. Boros or Simic? Mm. I love Warzov in my heart, mm -hmm. but I don't he know. Here's the thing. I've been spending... Uh, anyone who's been watching <coughs> knows that uh, I don't play a fair amount of competitive magic anymore because I don't play standard. So pre-release is one of the few times I can actually play in a tournament. And although it's supposed to be completely fun, it is sealed. It's not you're not supposed to like grind out a big win at the F and M or at the uh, pre-release. And in fact, JB's uh, uh, who runs the store here, the prize structure is that they give out packs for record at the end. You know, so all the four or the four or five O get so so many packs and stuff like that. But you also get a pack anytime you win a match, which is uh, very interesting because it rewards. Yep. Yeah, as we're joined now by Garrett. Garrett Meadows. I got the burger too. Yeah. Anthony built me out. Um, but, uh... Come in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, because we can't have anybody in front of that door. Or JB's mad. But, uh... So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that, like, I, I don't... I'd like to do well. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want to get more packs. So, thinking about it strategically, like... The more I've thought about it, it's between Simic and Gruul. Because I think uh, Gruul's Blood Rush ability, when your creatures are, like, giant gross, yeah. like, the ability to, like, play an aggressive guy on turn 2 or 3 and then get in for damage, but then, like, top-decking him on, like, turn 15 and it still be relevant, yeah. it's pretty crucial. Also, I think a sealed is relatively slower format, so you want the bigger guys. Um, and there's some green creatures that I really want to be playing with. The problem with Boros, it's also my problem with Orzov, is that, like, if you ever tried to play, like, just, like, balls to the wall aggro and sealed, it's very difficult, because you're kind of at the mercy <coughs> of the critical mass of aggressive creatures you get. And if you don't end up getting, like, the exact, you know, creatures you need with the burn, with the spot removal, whatever, like, you're kind of half and half. And, like, like 75% of an aggro deck and then, like, whatever cards to finish it off, it's, like, the right. greatest way to go, like, 1-4 in a pre-release. So, like, for that reason, like, I'm staying away from Boros. I'm, like, I'm a Boros guy at heart. Like, I love Boros. But I'm kind of staying away from that. And But, like, Simic is also really good because there's this dream curve of, like, going turn one, the 0-1 flyer that evolves. Yeah, I want to that evolve. That, that mechanic yeah. makes me the, So if you go with the turn one, 0-1 evolve guy that flies, then you have turn two, the 2-1 flash guy with evolve, then turn three, the 3-1 flying trampler. That into the four, like, God forbid you open the Master Biomancer, which is the the mythic or the rare. Magic. Yeah. Then you also ha you open yourself up to, like, a card like Biomass Mutation. Like, Biomass Mutation, that's another thing, too. Like, 
you also have to remember, like, in some of these guilds, like, like the hybrid cards and the cards you want to splash for, like, you want to make sure, like, the reason, uh, th I think I want to go Gruul. And the reason is, is because, like, if I open, like, a sweet Boros or white card, I can splash it a lot easier than I could, like, True. if you get some other things. But, uh, the fact of the matter is I will go 3-2 and be disappointed regardless of what I do, so. Looking Can forward to that. Matt tomorrow? Okay, so I need to clarify the situation. I'm already not in this weekend. I've already apologized to Jeremy Bales. Uh, I got, last week I said, Dr. Matt, Hey, Adam. Hey. Last week I said... Uh, you have to sit in my lap because you can't stand in front of the door. Last week I said, uh, former shop... Uh, this is happening now. People, here's what's going to happen. Somebody who's never seen this before is like, Oh, I don't want to I don't want to watch Paul Cheon draft. I'm just going to watch this FNM stream. Click. You got Garrett Relentless back here in that paper helmet. You got a grown ass man out of Victor's being being cradled in the arms of someone else. You got a, a King of the Hobo lumberjack guy in here. So this is either the worst thing possible or the greatest thing possible. Got your sure. viewers just called Drupal. This is the, the worst recap ever. <laughs> how can the uh, how can I quick? <laughs> how can I talk about <laughs> anything regarding? How can I talk about magic cards when this is happening? I hate magic. <laughs> <laughs> we shoveled snow together today. Mm -hmm. We okay. did. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was uh, it was rough. I saw a dog lick him. A dog lick him. Me. Oh, lick him. <laughs> this is gone. Like, this is, like, new low point for the stream, I think. What are you playing? You're playing tonight, right? Yeah, I'm playing Bog. Oh, you're playing the Bog deck the I wanted to play the Bog that me and Max made, but somebody was late. Well, you know, weather got out of hand. Everybody, everybody, else, everybody else made it on time. Talking. <coughs> my vehicle wasn't in my house till 620. Be careful, because, like, if JB opens that door and hits you, he'll be very upset. You have to hit Garrett first. Well, that is the only thing JB has requested is that we don't pile in front of that door. So, um, yeah, don't worry. Uh, people are talking about we should take screen captures of this. Uh, don't worry, I'll post. I'll post my own screen captures of this. Yeah. I already I, did. I post it already. I took previ previous instances. Garrett wore this helmet. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I think it, 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 you wear it the best. At least Garrett, relentless. Paper? No. It's like cardboard, isn't it? Yeah. Where did it come from? What, uh, are you playing in the Purely tomorrow? No, you're going to be here, but you can't play in the Purely. I'm going to try. I have to leave at, like, 4.30, so I don't know mm -hmm. how that's going to work. Well, out. regardless of whether or not you play, what, what, uh, you said Simic or Boros. What would Simic you pick? Simic or Demir. Simic or Demir. Just because, uh, the, um, milling of Demir is really good. Yeah, enough. there's a, <laughs> yeah, there's a situation where if you open, like, if you open, like, a skull, was it Mind Grind? Or something, yeah. Play yeah. Boros with this helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Garrett. If you wear the helmet, you have to play Boros. But if you take the helmet off, then you can choose any of the other four as well. But so you're stuck playing Boros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check you aside. You're pro you're gonna play Gruul, aren't you? I don't know. I don't okay. know if I'm gonna play. It. You know if you're gonna play period? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Just stay home and wear a helmet? I, mean, I, could, I, yeah. could, I could just come down and hang out. You can come down and hang out and commentate with me. I'm not, <coughs> I'm not a big fan of the limited. I don't like limited because I suck at it. Here's the problem, like anything else, like the only way you can get better is to keep doing it. But it's like it's very deterring when you suck at it to like yes playing. Because you only have to play five dollars to suck at standard, yeah. but you have Whoa. to pay fifteen dollars a week. Oh my gosh! Put my bag back. I beat uh, I beat Sam Black on MTGO in the draft. Nice. The real Sam Black, real or just Sam some Black. guy named Sam Black, who's like a thirteen-year-old no, kid like from his, New his Haven. By Callus? Yes, it is. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Second, I'm going to ask you this is what's your greatest magic achievement of any top ASCG open? <laughs> like beating the same black. Beating the same black in a 4 2 2 draft? <laughs> Where you got land screwed and I drew perfect? <laughs> it's got to be a 4 2 2, so it's really. <laughs> I'd be surprised if same black makes 4 2 2s. We're just waiting for that one casual match to finish. There's a couple of casual guys that were still grinding it out out there. Pretty casual. Low light of the week. I need a... That's my first note. <laughs> low light of the week. Oh, sorry, JB. My bad. Is everybody done out there, JB? What's the duct tape from? Uh, that's your missing duct tape. Oh, from States? <laughs> I, I loaned these guys a roll of duct tape playing? the first week of October. Okay. You playing JB? You playing Cameron. 
All right, so round two is Perry. We got, uh, did you see there? You're playing Christian Holstein. I don't know who that is. Adam, you're playing Jason Roth. Uh, he's wearing a black hoodie, has glasses. And then, of course, Max Turner is playing in our feature match. Uh, Max, playing the deck that you chose for him to play last week, uh, which is a Rug Delver deck. Rugs. Delver, so you do need your deck to play. That is a good strategic decision. Max playing uh, Delver, Snapcaster Mage, Huntmaster of the Fells, and then a crap ton of instants. Uh, the deck needs a little bit of tuning. Uh, we we did we did realize that, but uh, it's at least viable. Apparently, it doesn't match up well with Mill. What are you gonna do?